Buried deep within the Eagle Nebula, somewhere around 7,000 light years away, sits three towering pillars of dust and gas, known as the Pillars of Creation. These majestic structures, each one stretching five light years or more, conceal one of nature's most extraordinary miracles, the birth of new stars. Within these dense columns of gas lie the perfect conditions for new stars to form. During a process that takes millions of years, gravity slowly brings these clouds of gas together, building the temperature and pressure inside them until eventually a star is born. With each birth, a shockwave is released that clears some of the nebula around them, an event that marks their birth in glorious fashion, announcing their arrival to the local family of stars that surrounds them. The Pillars of Creation are some of the most breathtaking regions ever observed by the Hubble Telescope, and one that the James Webb Telescope will be sure to revisit in the coming years. What makes them so special is they represent far more than just a visual spectacle. They're a symbol, a reminder to us that the universe is a living, breathing structure, an evolving landscape filled with creation and destruction. To many, they are an inspiration and a perfect representation of what it means to say the beauty of the universe. But a number of years ago, their very existence came under threat by new data captured from the Spitzer Space Telescope. Using infrared imaging, astronomers identified a cloud of hot dust approaching the pillars, a cloud that was thought to be formed from a much bigger kind of shockwave, not from the birth of a star, but rather the death of one, a supernova buried somewhere in the nebula itself. It's not uncommon for star-forming regions like this one to experience supernovas, simply due to the huge numbers of stars developing there. Given the scale of the nebula, it was theorized that this shockwave would completely obliterate the pillars in around a thousand years from now. And yet, in a recent twist, further research has shown that there isn't enough radio or X-ray radiation to suggest a supernova ever happened at all. In fact, the cloud of hot dust that was observed might have been caused by the stellar winds from massive stars in the area. To the relief of many enthusiasts and astronomers around the world, it looks like the pillars of creation aren't going anywhere just yet. But they are slowly eroding, which has a lot to do with their unusual shape. Like ice cream cones melting in the midday sun, they are slowly evaporating away under the intense radiation from the nearby stars in the center of the Eagle Nebula, a process we can already see is happening when we look closer at the images taken over the last couple of decades. And that's what we're doing today, a deep dive into the pillars of creation. Five years after the Hubble telescope was launched, it would turn its watchful eye towards the Eagle Nebula, an open cluster of around 8,000 stars discovered by Jean-Philippe de Chazeau 300 years earlier. Within this stunning nebula, there existed a great cavity filled with newly formed stars and a stunning internal structure where the nebulous gas intertwines with the void of empty space. Along this internal structure are three stalagmites protruding from the base. Using the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2, Hubble was able to focus on these three columns of gas to create a composite image in which the elements hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen could be overlaid, giving them their own colour in a process known as false colour imaging. In 1995, these were some of the most breathtaking images the Hubble telescope had ever taken. They showed a space in a way we had never seen before, 
showing us clouds of gas in a distant nebula that could just as well have been taken here on Earth in our own atmosphere. Clouds that had an elegant 3D structure, with a bright glow from the light of the nearby stars bearing down on them, and dark areas from the shade created by the columns of gas. In 2014, almost 20 years after the original photos were taken, Hubble revisited the pillars, this time with an upgraded camera, the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 3. This camera had an even greater resolution and reduced noise, forming a much crisper image, revealing details we had not been able to see before, whilst also covering a much larger area, around six times larger than the originals. When we overlay the two, it really shows how far the technology had progressed since the launch of the telescope, and actually demonstrates one of the benefits Hubble has over the James Webb Telescope. Being just outside our atmosphere, it has been possible to upgrade Hubble over time, something that the Webb Telescope was never designed for. The 20 year gap allowed us to observe very small changes in the pillars over time. For example, the original photo showed a jet of matter emanating from one of the newly formed stars inside. But in the revisited images, we can see how this jet has extended. Although it looks tiny, the jet has travelled a further 60 billion miles over that 20 year period, around 600 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And this really helps us to imagine the sheer scale that we are looking at here. When you stop to think, we can fit 600 astronomical units in just this tiny gap alone. And perhaps the best feature of the 2014 images was that they clearly showed how the pillars came to form in the first place. If we look to the bottom of the middle pillar, we can see that dust and gas is being evaporated and blown away, like ice cream melting in the midday sun. And actually, that's not a bad analogy for it. The top of the pillars are made of very dense gas, much denser than the rest of the pillar. The glow we are seeing is actually a thin layer of ionized gas, caused by the intense radiation from the stars in the central cavity of the Eagle Nebula. Each pillar has a head that is too dense to be melted straight away. Instead, it's creating shade which stops the gas underneath it from evaporating. And as we go lower down, there is less shade. And gradually, we see how the strong radiation and winds from the nearby stars are blowing and evaporating the gas away. A better way to see this density difference between the top and bottom of the pillars is to look at them in infrared, images Hubble also took in 2014. In infrared, we are able to cut through a lot of the dust and gas, but even then the heads of the pillars remain quite opaque because of how dense they are. The lower regions, on the other hand, are almost completely transparent because the gas is much thinner there. As the pillars age, the thinner bases will be the first to erode completely. But in time, the top of the pillars will erode too, finally revealing the newly formed stars that were hiding inside them, a process that will take another 100,000 years. Seeing the pillars in infrared also reveals a much greater number of stars, as we cut through most of the dust and gas that was otherwise blocking them from view. Background stars seem to blend with foreground stars, which really plays havoc on our perspective. In fact, this issue with depth really becomes obvious when we analyze the pillars with the MUSE instrument. Using this technology, we can see that the pillars aren't three columns at all, but actually four distinct structures that lie at slightly different distances and angles, with some pointing away and some towards us. The more we study the pillars of creation, the more fascinating and curious they become. With each new technology, 
we learn things we didn't know before, and they're like the gift that keeps on giving. The next milestone will really be when the James Webb Telescope finally takes a look with its even better infrared technology. As of the making of this video, we still don't know when that's going to be. But having been a long-term fan favourite for amateur and professional astronomers alike, I have a feeling it'll be sooner rather than later. It's likely that our sun was born in a nebula just like this one. And the more we can learn about them, the more we'll really learn about ourselves and where we came from. Maybe one day we'll learn the secrets about what makes us so special. And perhaps even what we should be looking for if we want to discover the next star that could harbour life in the galaxy. Growing up as a kid, the Pillars of Creation were always one of the most breathtaking and inspiring images I ever saw taken in the universe. And for that reason alone, they'll always have a place in my heart. I hope I've been able to share some of their beauty with you all, and that, just like me, you can now eagerly await the next chapter on this majestic nebula.